Non-penalty XG is a great stat to use in order to see the quality of chances that a player is getting, and usually a drop in goals is directly correlated with a drop in non-penalty XG. But is that the case for Marcus Rashford, and if so, why? Players like Jadon Sancho for Keo Tomori and Jude Bellingham have thrived whilst playing away from the pressure of England, and could Rashford be the same, and if so, where should he go? Or could a move to a certain Premier League club actually be more beneficial for Rashford? I will be answering all of those questions, but before we get into that, for cheap good quality football jerseys, retro jerseys and tracksuits, go over to www.jerseyfifa.com. I myself have bought a number of different jerseys from them, and my favourite has to be my Manchester United 2003-2004 shirt with Ronaldo on the back. And they've also just brought in the new MLS season shirts, which look absolutely insane. My favourites are either the LA Galaxy one or the Inter Miami one. So go over to Jersey FIFA, I'll leave a link in the description below. And if you use code AlantisFootball at checkout, you'll also get 5% off. So I think it's fair to say that Marcus Rashford is not the same player he once was, looking a shadow of his former self in recent months. He is now 24-25 in October, and so now he's coming into a make or break point in his career. But when exactly was Rashford at his best? Well, some argue it was when he first burst onto the scene at the end of the 2015-2016 season. However, that was more of a great run of form where he scored in the Europa League, twice against Arsenal and against Manchester City at the Etihad, just to name a few. Under Mourinho, he stagnated, but when Solskjaer first came in, Rashford seemed to have gotten back to his best. I would say that it was 2019, maybe 2020, when Rashford was the player that we all came to recognise. When Solskjaer initially was interim manager, Rashford was probably performing at the best level we've seen him perform in a Manchester United shirt. He played primarily as the side's main centre forward in Solskjaer's 4-2-3-1 with three attackers behind him, usually three of Pogba, Martial, Lingard or Sanchez, and United played with a fast-paced, quick transition in attack, where they would look to play direct vertical passes to move the attack forward quickly, and so Rashford would have the space to peel off the centre-back and make a run down the outside, as he did against Tottenham when Pogba picked up the ball in the centre of the pitch and played a wonderful curling pass into Rashford's path, and Rashford showcased one of his trademark finishes which is his low driven shot across the keeper from the right side into the bottom far corner. At the start of the next season we would also see Rashford's movement in behind to full effect against Chelsea on the opening day of the season, when once again Pogba picked up the ball in the centre of the field and played a wonderful floated pass over the top of the relatively high Chelsea back line, finding Rashford's well-timed diagonal run from the left side and he controlled the pass with a feather touch before Cawley slotting the ball past Kepa. Against Leicester during Solskjaer's interim period, we saw again the Pogba and Rashford combination when Pogba lofted a pass over the back line, Rashford's control was once again on point and he drilled the ball low and hard past Michael. So from all of these goals we can see that Rashford is phenomenal when making movements in behind the back line and when he's in these high pressurised situations with a split second to think, he is usually deadly accurate with his striking and this will be relevant later on when we come on to why Rashford is struggling. But it wasn't just his goal scoring that was significantly better, it was his overall play outside of the box. He seemed to be a lot more assured of his decision making when he would receive the ball, whereas now he receives the ball, seems hesitant and slows the pace of the game down to a grinding halt before attempting to perform his next action. But around 2019-2020, Rashford didn't have any of this level of hesitance, and so when he received the ball he would then shift it quickly to drive forward, and that split second without hesitation was the essential part of the movement to catch the defender off guard, enabling him to either play a pass or complete a dribble. Because he's lacking confidence, every time he receives a ball it's almost as if he doesn't want to move quickly, from fear of losing possession, and so wants to hesitate to double check what the right option is before he then does it, but instead he just closes off his best option, allowing the opposition player to readjust and making it hard for him to then beat his man or find a successful forward pass. Another aspect of Rashford's success during this spell was that he was getting into goal scoring positions. Now this seems obvious but when we look at the stats it becomes more apparent. This season in the Premier League he's recorded a non-penalty XG rate of 0.25 per 90 which is down from last season when it was 0.29 per 90 but both are massively down from the season before in 2019-2020 when it was 0.45 per 90. Now Rashford is getting into less goal scoring positions because of his own inability to find the space 
and make the runs. However, I also think it comes down to him playing more as an orthodox left-sided attacker rather than a left-sided forward, which means that rather than being encouraged to sit higher up the pitch on the shoulder of the last defender, he now finds himself dropping deep on the flank and moving in between the lines of the opposition midfield and defence, and this just isn't where his best attributes can thrive. Now, this does seem like an obvious statement, but the less goal-scoring opportunities you get in, just from probability, the less you are going to score. Now, this might not be a massive problem if you are primarily a chance-creating attack, as someone like Jaden Sancho is, but Marcus Rashford along with Anthony Martial is much more of a goal scorer than a goal creator and that's why when playing wide both players are better as inside forwards, sitting higher up the pitch and rather than looking to receive the ball between the lines they can then look to make movements in behind the back line into goal scoring positions. When we look at his chance creating metrics we can see that he has actually increased his expected assist rate this season from the last two previous but his key passes per 90 have decreased and what I would take from this overall is that Rashford is creating less chances per 90 however the quality of those chances have increased but whereas this could be spun to be a positive I would actually say this is more down to him coming on as a substitute when the game is stretched and therefore getting into better positions to then create those chances whereas in the previous two seasons he was starting the majority of the games and those spaces aren't available as much because the game is rarely stretched within the first half or first 60 minutes and this is one reason why you do have to sometimes look at the context behind the stats rather than just the stats on their own. So to summarise, Rashford's non-penalty XG and non-penalty goals have drastically fallen because he's no longer getting into as many goal-scoring positions, which is mainly due to him playing more as an orthodox left winger rather than a left-sided inside forward or as a centre forward. He's also not the same outside of the box in terms of his ability to beat a man, play quick passes with his teammates or create chances because there's too much hesitation in his game, making his play predictable and this does stem from his lack of confidence, which is a spiralling circle. However, I do think that Rashford can get back to his best. He's 24-25 in October and despite having an injury that did keep him out from July to October last year, that was a shoulder injury and not a ligament or muscle injury, which is usually the cause of a player's decline. So if he stays at Manchester United, he needs to be playing more as either an advanced forward in a 4-2-3-1 or in a front to or at least as an inside forward in a three-man front line but given United's options up front and potential for summer signings in those areas Rashford may have to leave this summer to rejuvenate his career but where should he go well before I get into that if you are interested in Manchester United next season I will be releasing videos on whether I would prefer Ten Hag or Pochettino as Manchester United manager who Manchester United should sign with Ten Hag or Pochettino as manager and also looking at individual players who could do a job for Manchester United as well such as some players from the Premier League. A video on that should already be out on my channel and I have also got videos on young players like James Garner, Hannibal Medjbury, Charlie McNeil, Ahmed Diallo and Facundo Palestri to name a few. All of those videos will be in the playlist linked in the description. So I have narrowed it down to five teams and then at the end I will be ranking each team one to five looking at which would be the best move for Rashford and so so I am going to be playing the role of agent in these Rashford transfers, trying to get the best move not just for Rashford himself, but also for the clubs as well. So the first team is going to be Newcastle. Now this does seem like the perfect calculated risk for Newcastle, as they do need a versatile forward, who can play either as a centre forward or from either flank. However, at this current point in time, they can't attract the world-class talent, and so do need to be looking to bring in players in their early to mid-twenties who do have the potential to develop into these world-class players in the next few years. Rashford fits that profile, he'd likely cost between 35 and 40 million pounds, a little expensive for his current ability, but if he can get back to his 2019-2020 best, then it will look like a bargain. He's English, which is always a bonus, he's only 24, from the north of England, and more importantly, he fits the on-the-pitch profile that Newcastle need. In a 4-3-3, Eddie Howe could use Rashford and St Maximan, either side of Chris Wood, with Rashford effectively being used as a forward in possession, making those runs ahead of Chris Wood, who would be dropping off playing more as a target man. For Rashford as well I think it would be a good move, whilst at the moment Newcastle are a mid-table side at best, next season they do want to be pushing for the top half bare minimum and within a few seasons they'll be aiming for the Champions League qualification spots 
And not only this, but Rashford would be a guaranteed starter, which is essential for any move he makes. I think £40 million max is a good price for Newcastle to take a calculated risk, and that could pay off massively in the future. The next club on the list is Borussia Dortmund. Now, Borussia Dortmund are losing a half-decent player in Erling Haaland this summer, and so will be in the market for a replacement. And Marcus Rashford would fit the bill perfectly. Yes, £35 to £40 million pounds is a lot more than Dortmund would usually pay, but Rashford, at his best, would be a calibre above what they would otherwise be able to replace Haaland with. Marco Rose, the Dortmund manager, has used a range of different systems, from a 3-5-2 to a 4-2-3-1 to a 4-4-2 diamond. And because of this, Dortmund and do need a forward who is versatile, able to play as a centre forward or more as an inside forward from the flank at times, and Rashford would be perfect for this. He provide the same pace, ball carrying ability and running in behind that Haaland does, suiting Dortmund's quick transition and attack perfectly, which is where Rashford is at his best. The Bundesliga's naturally high pressing and fast paced games are also going to suit Rashford a lot more than the deep defensive blocks that Manchester United come up against frequently in the Premier League. Therefore, I think Rashford would be a good option for Borussia Dortmund as their main striker. And I could see him excelling there, becoming more of a centre forward than a winger, which would suit his game a lot better as it would enable him to get more goals and get more goal contributions as well. The third side on this list is Inter Milan. Now, Inter desperately lack pace in their front line. With Lautaro Martinez not exactly being rapid and Dzeko likely to lose to Harry Maguire in a 40 metre dash. Inzaghi uses a 5-3-2 system with two centre forwards. And so I think Inter need a player like Marcus Rashford who is a hybrid between a winger and a forward, having the ball carrying ability to spin out into the flanks and isolate defenders in 1v1s, whilst also being able to make runs in behind the back line into goal scoring positions, and then having the ability to finish from one on ones or wide positions in the box. And this is everything that at his best Marcus Rashford excels at, being able to open up his body to slot the ball into the far corner with his right foot from the left side, or draw the ball hard and low across the keeper from the right side. Inter is a massive club in the Champions League and would be competing for league titles, and I think that Rashford would be a great strike partner for Lotaro Martinez and would be significantly cheaper and better in the long term than re-signing Romelu Lukaku. The fourth club on my list is going to be Steven Gerrard's Aston Villa. Now Gerrard, like Marco Rose at Dortmund, does like to use a 4-4-2 diamond system, in which he has Ollie Watkins and Danny Ings playing as split strikers up front. However, I think a player like Marcus Rashford, who is, as I said before, a hybrid between a winger and a forward, would be a much better option in either of those positions than either Watkins or Ings. Alongside one of the two current strikers that Gerrard has, Rashford could play from the left side, sitting high up the pitch and looking to make runs into the channels, between the opposition's fullback and centre-back. He also wouldn't be asked to do as much defensive work as he would if he was a traditional left-sided attacker, so he could sit higher up the pitch out of possession and provide the perfect counter-attacking threat when Villa won the ball back. He would be expensive at 35 to 40 million pounds and on big wages, but I do think that given Villa's squad is already pretty good, they can afford to allocate a large chunk of the wage and transfer budget to Rashford. And with the players in their squad and Gerard as manager, I could see them challenging for the top six next season, particularly if they can bring in Rashford in the summer and get him back to his best. The final club on my list is West Ham. Now West Ham are firmly the 7th best side in the Premier League at the moment, but I think they are short offensively and so if they can bring in a top level forward in the summer, that could take them into a real top 4 challenging position. In David Moyes' 4-2-3-1 or even when he uses the 5-2-3, he has Bowen, Fulnaus or Lanzini in behind Antonio and I think this does lack real blistering pace and a player who can drive the ball up the pitch whilst also providing a goal scoring threat, running off of Antonio and Rashford would be the player who could provide this. 35 to 40 million pounds is well within West Ham's budget and if West Ham were to go and get Lingard at the end of his United contract as well, I think they would not only have the quality but also the squad depth needed to sustain a push for top four and if Rashford was able to find his form of 2019 or 2020 then I think he could significantly improve West Ham and given that he's only 24, 25 in October, West Ham would have him throughout his peak years meaning that the likelihood is that he will improve further. So let's rank the teams 1 to 5. So in if I've gone for West Ham, as even though I do think it would be a good move, for West Ham particularly, I think that from Rashford's point of view, the other four are better options, because whilst West Ham are in a good spot right now, their squad does have key players who are ageing, 
Declan Rice is likely to leave in 2024 at least, and I don't really have much faith in David Moyes or the board's ability to rebuild the squad into a side capable of challenging for Europe again. So whilst it could work out for them in the short term, Rashford could find himself in a similar position to someone like Wilfred Zaha at Palace over the next two or three seasons. In fourth I've gone for Aston Villa because whilst I do think that Gerrard is capable of building a squad like Leicester who can push for the Champions League places within the next two to four seasons, I think it's going to be insanely hard for them to push on to become a legitimate Champions League side and then it is going to be hard for Rashford to get out of Villa Park to a bigger club because a five year contract would take him to 29-30 which could put him in a similar situation to Harry Kane where he's unable to force a transfer during his peak years. In third I've gone for Inter Milan simply because unlike the two before they can provide Champions League football and the chance of challenging for titles and trophies right now. Rashford would also be playing at one of the biggest clubs in the world, would be outside the UK which I think could be a massive benefit to his mindset and would suit the system that Inzaghi currently plays. In second I've gone for Newcastle as I think of all the English clubs outside of the top six, Newcastle for obvious reasons have the best chance of breaking into that group and could well be challenging for the Premier League in the next four to five seasons and Rashford could be the catalyst for that. Even at Tottenham and Arsenal, Rashford would likely not be in that position and so that's why Newcastle is so high on this list. And in first, I've gone for Borussia Dortmund and it is because I think the Bundesliga, Marco Rose's style of play and the fact that he's outside the UK will be of massive benefit to Rashford himself. Also at Dortmund, unlike Villa or West Ham, if in two years a big club is interested in him, he will be allowed to leave and that is probably what Rashford wants from his next move, a stepping stone to get back to the level he was at at Manchester United. So thank you for watching, if you enjoyed the video give it a like, subscribe to the channel and click the bell to get notified when my videos come out and put your thoughts in the comment section below and check out some of my other videos which I will be leaving linked in the description as well.